the Mammoth Mogul. This was the new aircraft that was released today, and many people I have seen seem to not like this aircraft. I guess, yes, it's not the Cyclone, or it's not the Vigilante, or it's not the Hunter, like many people want. But this morning, when I went on Twitter to see what new vehicle was released, a ton of people were saying, this thing is absolutely horrible. So my initial expectations were very, very low going into this plane. Matter of fact, I even didn't want to buy it in online because I didn't want to waste $2 million just to find out it's horrible. I didn't want another Bombushka incident. So I went to single player to spawn it in, but then I was like, you know what? Let's just do it online and get it over with. And come to find out, in my opinion at least, it's actually pretty damn good. So I think if you're going into this plane with low expectations, you will really enjoy this aircraft. Now, the first thing, we'll start with the price. So it is $3.1 million without the trade price, but if you do 30 source missions, you can get it for 2.3. And 2.3 compared to everything else isn't horrible. It's on par with all the supercars. It's on par with some of the middle range jets and aircraft that are in the game. So 2.3 million, that's not that bad. Now one downside is that it does only hold three people. I was hoping this would be the insurgent of the sky where you could cram eight people in there and obviously only one would be on the gun and one would be your co-pilot, but everyone would just be in the back. There's room back there, but they don't have seats. So I can understand if you're normally with a group of four plus, yeah, this isn't gonna be that helpful. But if it is just you and your friend, then I think you could have some really good times in this plane. Now. If we take a look at the Warstock Cash and Carry website, one thing Rockstar always do great are the descriptions. This one says, picture the scene. You're cruising low at 500 feet with a bogey on your six. Your turret man wheels around the guns, the roar of twin propellers in his ears, and cuts a ribbon of 50 cal holes right across their flank. As they fall out of the sky, you bring her round, swoop low enough to light a redwood off the burning wreckage and make for the sunset. If losing the cops after a spot of petty larceny can be more fun than in a mogul, we'd sure like to hear about it. And I think that does describe this vehicle really well, because just for the 40, 50 minutes that me and some friends were playing with this aircraft, it was really fun to get five stars on us and blow up all the cop cars and helicopters that we saw. Getting to specifics though, let's talk about the customization and the weapons. So you bring this to your hangar, you will notice there's quite a decent amount of customization. You have a lot of options. You have all the normal engine handling and countermeasure options and even armor options. Although armor, I really don't know what the purpose is on these aircraft. I guess all armor does, if someone's shooting you with a regular gun, you won't blow up as quickly. But most of the time people are going to be shooting at you with homing launchers or RPGs, so the armor is kind of pointless in my eyes. In addition to that, you have the customization, which we'll hop into in a second, and then we have the actual guns. So you have the option to put a gun on the nose for the pilot to use. You also have an upgrade for the guy in the gunner seat. So instead of only one gun, you have two now. And then this one is a bomber so you have the options of all the bombs. Now for the customization, there's a primary and a secondary. The primary is the main color. The secondary is really only on the engine. And there are some really cool liveries for this plane. My favorite one is the one with like the bore on it, but there's a military looking one. There's an expendable one. And some of the other basic ones are kind of cool. So I would say this is one of the better aircrafts for customization. Now, how those weapons and how the armor actually handle. The armor on this plane is nothing special. It's like most planes in that one homing launcher will disable your plane and then another one will blow you up. Also one sticky bomb or one RPG will blow you up. And as to be expected, a Hydra or a laser with the explosive cannons will absolutely wreck you. But the guns on the other hand are actually very, very good. I was really shocked to find this out but the nose gun, the gun that the pilot can control, while it's not explosive, it does a lot of damage. And it's actually very, very good against other aircraft. It's not as good against land vehicles, but if you shoot other jets or other helicopters, they blow up very quickly. So this thing, I would almost say, could hold its own against the Hydra, assuming 
you're good enough to fly it around and maneuver around the person's explosive cannon. And then the gun on top, the actual gunner gun, that thing is a beast as well. It's not explosive again, but it does so much damage against other aircraft. You can see in the gameplay, just against various lasers, cargo bobs, the military helicopters, the police helicopters, I think I even did a Hydra at one point. It, it shreds them very quickly. So I was very shocked to learn how powerful these guns are. Now, one downside to the gunner seat is that you don't have full range of motion. You can't go very high and you can't really turn or you can't go too far down. So really you're gonna have to team up with your pilot to make sure you know where you wanna be shooting to tell him, all right, angle the plane this way or something like that. If there's a plane above you, then he's gonna have to angle it up so you can actually shoot. That is something I found annoying. You don't have full range motion, which kind of sucks. One thing I do really like though about the gunner seat is you can get out or in if you want. Say you're in the pilot or the co-pilot seat and you wanna get into the gunner seat, just hold right on the D-pad or H on a PC and you go in. And you can actually do that as the pilot, but only if you're not moving, which I think kind of sucks. This is another feature where I would have liked them to put or to use that autopilot mode for the bomber, but in this case, have it be for the pilot going to the gunner seat. Because if you're not moving, you can hold H as the pilot and go to the gunner seat. But if you go in the air, then you can't actually do that. So that's kind of unfortunate. Now, in terms of speed, this thing is a little bit faster than the Tula. It doesn't have great speed. I think that's to be expected. It does have the Jado boost, though, which is very convenient. But speed to me on these newer aircraft don't matter that much because you do have the flares. So homing launchers and launchers and rockets that can lock onto you aren't that big of a deal. Really, the speed is going to come into play when you're when a Hydra or someone with an explosive cannon is coming after you, they're gonna, you know, wreck you if you don't have enough speed. And it's kind of unfortunate that the Hydra and the Laser have those explosive cannons. I mean, really, if they took those explosive cannons away and made them like the cannons on the Mogul, where they're very powerful, but they're not explosive, then the game, the aircraft in the game would be much more balanced. And I think the Mogul would almost be a must buy in that scenario. But with the Hydra, unfortunately, and with the upcoming Laser, I don't see many people using this aircraft because why use this one when you can use the Hydra, which is better. I guess if you want to play with friends, you could use this one. And that's what I would suggest. You know, if you want to buy this vehicle, buy it specifically to use against AI and NPCs. It's, it's really fun. Like I said, it's really powerful against AI and NPCs, against police. Maybe you can use this in missions. If you like playing in solo lobbies a lot, then this, this is probably gonna be a really fun vehicle to use. But I would say probably in public lobbies, just to avoid getting pissed off at people, stick to your Hydra or stick to your oppressor and try not to get killed by griefers. One benefit I will say regarding that slow speed is that it actually helps you a lot for aiming and for using the bombs. If you're in one of the super fast aircraft and you're trying to aim at something, it's very hard to do that just because your, your plane's all over the place. But with this slower mogul, you can position yourself a lot easier to take someone down if you're in a gunfight or to drop bombs on them if they're on the ground. So to answer the question, should you buy it? I would say yes. If you have the trade price, I would not pay 3.1 million. 2.3 is a little bit more reasonable. I would have really liked to see this vehicle at around 1.5 million, but you know, it's Rockstar. So I guess you had to expect more expensive aircraft. But if you have that 2.3 trade price, I would purchase it at that number. If you're going to be using this with friends a lot to just have fun. This isn't going to be a vehicle that you can grief in. This isn't going to be a vehicle that's going to dominate the skies but if you know going into it that you can have some fun with it because the the thing is actually very good you will enjoy your purchase it just sucks that while it's very good the hydra and let's say the laser they are just the best because of the explosive cannon so really in the end it's just another aircraft that is good but i don't think many people are going to end up buying it because rockstar doesn't know how to balance a game properly and they won't go back and change certain things like i said if the vehicles in the game were balanced then this thing could potentially be one of the new best aircraft but unfortunately it's not the way it goes so what we got is what we got to deal with but thank you all for watching let me know in the comment section if you guys like the mogul or if you don't I'm also doing a shark card giveaway for this vehicle if you guys want to win. It's over on my Twitter, so go ahead over there and check it out. 
Thank you all for watching. Please drop the video a like if you did enjoy. Subscribe for more awesome GTA content. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.